Okay, then. The next subject we will discuss about the three classic books mentioned in the introduction of School of Jindao in the previous lecture. They are I Jing, Diamond Sutra, and Tao Te Ching. These three in total, I'm sure you have all heard about them. They are the classics known to every household. But there are only a handful of people who really understand these three books. Even fewer could master these three books. These three books are the masterpieces of Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism. First, let's talk about I Ching. I Ching, also known as Zhou Yi. The meaning of Zhou, it is not the Zhou as the Zhou dynasty. It is not the Zhou as a last name. The meaning of Zhou in the name of this book actually means a cycle, a closed loop. Therefore, I Ching is a priceless, immortal classic book about all lives in this looping universe. About the E, the E as in Zhou E, should be regarded semantically as triple E, simplicity, variance, and constant. As we all know very well, what is the simplest thing in the world? What is it? The simplest thing in the world is one. Even kids in kindergarten know it is undoubtedly the simplest. But having said so, with one stroke, Fushi has completed the creation of Genesis some 7,000 years ago and found the essence of eternal truth, which still applies even today. Therefore, the simple and immortal truth about one is actually the infinite oneness of truth, as what we mentioned in the books of School of Gen Dao. It is not simple. The contrary to simplicity is constant, which is non-existence of life and death. Now, we will elaborate on this later in the lecture of Zen Scripture. The other one is the variance of oneness of Tai Chi. The oneness of Tai Chi is also one, only that this one can change. Our oneness of truth does not change. Oneness of Tai Chi is about variance. The constant oneness of truth is infinity, while the variant oneness of Tai Chi is ultimate finite. Variance is change beyond predictable. Despite they are both oneness, a one is constant, another one is variance. The difference is subtle but profound. Upon hearing this, people blessed with destiny will be interested to learn more. This is the truth from which life of the universe begins. Soon in the future lecture on the Gen Scripture, we will have the opportunity to talk about this in depth, to the truth of life, to the secrets of the universe. This oneness can unveil and explain them all. Therefore, the facts and authenticity in eternity are what the Diamond Sutra means, emptiness of nature and pseudo-existence, and what the Tao Te Ching means, practicing virtues based on the doctrines of righteousness. In this world we are living in, 
other than what we have talked about, about the oneness as a simplicity. What is the second simplicity? It is about zero and one. When our children first learn mathematics in elementary schools, they begin with as simple as zero, one, two, three, four. They start with zero and one. They are really simple. However, the most extreme, the most incredible, and the most powerful usually hide in the context of simplicity. How is that so? Modern technology. I assume everyone knows something about computers. Especially young people. Who knows computers better than they do? We all know that zero and one are the fundamentals to modern computers. They make possible the digital description of information. So how did Leibniz, a German mathematician who devised the modern binary system, became interested in zero and one in the first place? We will be amazed with his story. Leibniz's ideas about binary were inspired from the 64 emblems described in I Ching. That's how he discovered the binary system. Therefore, that is how zero and one have given birth to the endless internet as we know of today. Simple as this story may be, but it tells us that Fuxi, who lived 7,000 years ago, was not only the forefather of Han Chinese civilization, but also the pioneer of modern computer technology. Folklore describes him as a hybrid of human and dragon. Okay, let's go on to variants in I Ching. Variance in I Ching helps us to understand the theory of everything in this universe. All phenomena visible to us do not really exist. They are merely pseudo-phenomena that never stop changing. That is why I Ching was not called I Ching in the beginning. It was called Bianjing, meaning the canon of variance. The world we are living in changes constantly. We have mentioned earlier about changes that never stop. And that state of constant change makes life suffer. We have conditioned ourselves to be adherent to phenomena that never stop changing. And these changes are beyond our control. And we are so naive about these phenomena. The variance, as referred in I Ching, is about mastering all changes that dominate everything in this world, such as the cycle of birth, aging, sickness, and death that we humans have to go through. The same cycle applies to plants. Even minerals have different stages of forms. These non-stop changes are not necessarily visible to the naked eye. But we can observe these changes of variance, these changes, or the variance as I Ching refers to, as a part of the semantical triple E, remember. Variance explains to us about changes of all phenomena that are perceived to be existing in this ever-changing world. That is why we can also call it Bian Jing. From now on, perhaps, you will understand that I Ching may help you to learn about this ever-changing world and help you to appreciate the ever-changing phenomena when applied to our lives. You will be able to master your destiny, even your next life. That is what Bian Jing is all about. The phenomena we mentioned above are also described in the Diamond Sutra, that all phenomena with a shape or form are pseudo-existence. Simply put, all things are illusions. 
because they never stop changing. There is no such state as permanent state. That is why the Diamond Sutra says, all phenomena are the products of incidental maturity. That is why the last chapter of the Diamond Sutra tells us, under the law of incidental maturity, everything is an illusion, shapeless like morning dew, and short-lived like lightning. These are the variants, as referred to by I Ching. Next, we will talk about the constant as referred to by I Ching. Constant in I Ching is telling us that, like what we have mentioned about, behind the ever-changing pseudo-phenomena is a principle that does not change. And that principle is constant. Constant is a principle. It does not concern with life or destruction. It will never change. To elaborate, within the phenomena of life and destruction, there is an entity that has nothing to do with life or destruction. Within the ever-changing state, there is a fact that never changes, which is the truth that we are pursuing. As it is invisible to the naked eye, we are denied the understanding of the truth. If we pursue the truth with our ideas, or our philosophy, not even with our science, the sages and the virtuous at ancient times have already told us in these three classics. We have just mentioned that we are inherently biased to a certain level. That's why we have failed to consolidate Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism into one great fusion. If we integrate the scriptures of the three, which share the same roots and origins, then we will be able to help all people to clearly, undoubtedly, see the truth. The principle exists but invisible to our naked eye. As we have just mentioned, therefore, in this dais of Jen Dao, we hope to unveil the truth to the world, to allow the human race to have principles to live by, to fully appreciate. As we have mentioned about that there is a principle invisible to our naked eye. In other words, among life and destruction, there is a principle that concern neither life nor destruction. Here is a simple example to help you better understand. For human beings, we are able to see, able to feel, through our flesh and bones in existence. But we know that deep within the flesh and bones, there is something spiritual that cannot be destructed. Such spirituality is actually the principle we talked about earlier. It can't be seen with the naked eye. It can't be sensed through sedendria, which includes eyes, ears, nose, tongues, body, and mind. That's why we, the mortals, who strive just to get by day after day, are wasting efforts on pursuing pseudo-phenomena in vain, to an extent that they no longer know how to return to the spirituality, or unable to comprehend the truth about life and destruction. Therefore, in this civilization driven by material lust, minds and souls are left alienated, that is exactly what the sages and the virtuous of ancient times are trying to teach us. We, let's bring back the truth through School of Gen Dao. To help people around the world who are so immersed in this civilization of material items to enhance the civilization of minds and souls and find harmonic coexistence between material and minds and souls. That is what we are proposing 
Symbiosis of Minds and Material, which is an amicable way of Zhongdao, or the way of neutrality. Here is another example of ginseng and Chinese gold thread, herbs used in Chinese medicines. To further explain the spirituality we've talked about. Ginseng is a vehicle that carries the principle that supplements our stamina, but is invisible to us. It is the supplementary principle that matters. We extract its essence with scientific methods, either by the old-fashioned way, which is boiling it down and reduced to desired level. The supplementary essence is then transferred to the reduced fluid. We consume the fluid and indirectly consume the supplementary essences. But we don't see the principle itself that really does the job. So is Chinese gold thread. It has a form visible to us and a chilling principle invisible to us. Ginseng and Chinese gold thread, one supplements, the other chills. They work on the opposite. We know that the chill helps fighting the inner torrid. They may have contradictive effects, but in practice, they do their jobs in the same way. We also know that flowers emit pleasant scents. The scents are volatile, but at the same time, the scents deodorize. We humans are pleased when smelling the floral scents without ever seeing the scents in any tangible form. No, we don't see that. This simple example, it tells us you may not see it or touch it, not even through sedendria, the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. But that doesn't mean it does not exist. It exists, indeed. It is a truth that it exists. It has to be truth, so that it may function. It's like our minds and souls. We are ultimately dominated by our minds and souls. As we live in a world of material, we overlook our minds and souls. We spend every day on fulfilling desires for material lust. That explains why we each feel so cast away at the level of minds and souls, even though we are living in a world so civilized and rich in material. That also explains why we each feel so stressed out spiritually. The reason is that we are denied of the truth. Okay, we will wrap up here for this lecture. Thank you all, and wish you all happiness.